on Kane! It's 1-0. Put the key down. 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, good afternoon and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. I hope you are all doing well. As I put in the chat, we are heading towards 30, 30k. We want to hit that before the end of the season. So don't forget to subscribe and, of course, hit that like button. Uh, apologies, I didn't get a chance to watch the press conference live and react instantly after, although we hadn't done that bad for time. I was up last night, of course, watching WrestleMania. I then had my kids. I then had to drop Harry off at his nana so that I could take the girl girls into town to then get some new school shoes and then come back. And now I've got to quickly do this video, quickly pre-record my Sunderland preview, which will be out tonight, pre-record. And then I've got to go get Harry. So it's all a bit mad and I'm still tired and I'm running on empty and all that sort of stuff. But that's what happens when you watch WrestleMania. Um, please do smash a like though, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in and of course hit that notification bell. Ethan says, Dior, do you think Farka will start Creswell over Cooper? We're, we're, we're going to get into this. I'll be real with you. I started to start to do my preview this morning. I making my notes and checking sites for data and stuff like I do because I like to do a little bit of homework. And this is the first time, and I know I, I shouldn't really start to falter with five games left, but this is the first time that I've started to get worried this season. You know, because. Sunderland have a great record against us at Ellen Road. Daniel Farker has also never beaten the Black Cats. <laughs> so that worries me. That worries me straight away. Then I look at the press conference and Ethan Ampadu who's ill, not trained, and is a major doubt. Gruev probably shouldn't be playing or is playing more. Basically, what I'll say is that international break has absolutely battered us. Has battered us. So, like, yeah, Jamie, that's how I feel right now. We need a win. We just need a win. And then, obviously, there's all the fallout from... Basically, Daniel Fark has come out and proper defended Bamford. Proper defended him, which is fine. And I get it. But, like, my, my thing is now... It's now got to the stage where I'm hoping I'm praying. Hoping I'm praying that Bamford can find the back of the net. I don't want to be in the same situation that we were last season when he failed to score against Leicester and stuff. And that's why I'm worried about that as well. I'm like, oh God. You know, I, I know I said keep the faith and I will still keep the faith. But just doing the research for the preview, um, I'll just give you a little I'll give you a little glimpse into my preview that I'm going to pre-record here but this is the key points yeah Sunderland has an excellent recent away record against Leeds with three wins and one draw in their last four visits to Ellen Road um yeah so there's that uh also Mike Dodds is back in charge who engineered the win at Sunderland I thought they made us look pretty ordinary Jack Clark, he's back and actually came and, and and starred at the weekend, yeah, when he came off the bench, I think. Um, so he's back and probably will start. Um, and Daniel Farker has never beaten the Black Cats in three attempts, you know. So that's a little bit of a worry as well. So there's all that thing, and then and then. When was the last time we actually played them at home? I'll tell you now. Um, 2018. 2018. That's Evie. That still doesn't fill me with confidence. I know it's a long time ago. <laughs> but it don't fill me with confidence. Um, so, yeah. I think, yeah, Andy, I agree with you. I do agree with you. But as a... Listen, I don't know the other team's niggles. But if you're telling me that Ampadu's out, then that's a big worry, isn't it? Gruev, who was so important, was no... You know, these niggles are... They're not They're not Jamie Shackleton's. They're not Sam Byram's. They're not 
you know, Dan James, if you've got Nonto waiting on the bench, they are Gruyev, Ampadu. You know, they're key people. Key people. So you can call it niggles, whatever, but it's it's not looking good. And I, this is the first time that I've started to worry. If I'm honest, and I, and I can only I can only speak my truth. Um, but yes. Um, yeah. Um, yes. I need to. I need to look. Keep the faith. Yeah, I will keep the faith. Um, I will keep the faith. But let's go through the the press conference anyway. Um. And um and and let's see what's being said. Uh, please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, of course, get your comments in and and, and hit that notification bell. Um, and we'll go, uh, and we'll go from it. Um, yeah, Rysel, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I get, I got that energy as well. I got that energy as well. And he's staunch defensive Bamford, which I like, by the way. But it's like, I don't know. Um. I think we're go we're we're going to touch on some key things anyway. I've got my notes. We'll go through. We'll read it and and we'll react as we like to do, as we tend to do. Okay. So, first and foremost, yeah, Joe B. Thank you for the message, mate. I'm just rushing around, so I couldn't be. I just went yes, paste, but I'll sort it out after the fact. Um, yeah. Um, Farker on Coventry setback. Special feeling because we're not used to having a day after a loss. You know, we were saying yesterday on the final word, we're not used to losing, right? This is a new sort of feeling for this team as well. Yes, they've lost previously in the season, but it's been a hell of a long time, you know? 15, 16 games, you know, you've got Somerville coming off the pitch going, back to winning ways, right? And you've got Rutter going, let's go! Now it's a different kind of mental fortitude that is needed. Lockie put it perfectly in last night's final word they need to come back from this how will they come back from this can they come back from this with only five games left to go we uh we'll wait and see but um he said i allowed um you know the first 24 hours for them to suffer a little bit to be self-critical um i don't like vanity or to sugarcoat a game when we're not at our best away at coventry so they've they've had the right act yeah they've had the right act He's let them fester in in that negativity, if you like. And listen, when when you hear a coach speak like this, he's he knows what's best for these players. You know, he knows his man management skills for me are are second to none from what I've seen this season. I know people might disagree, but I think he's right up there. He's been there, he's done there. He's wore the t-shirt. He created the t-shirt. He knows what's needed at this time in the season for me. He did say it's important not to dwell on it and see the bigger picture. If around Christmas, when we were 17 points behind Leicester, if someone told me that we were just two points behind and one point behind Ipswich, you know, I'd have snapped their hand off. And I think we're all, we we would all agree with that. You know, I actually thought about it this morning and I know it won't, like the mad thing is, if we get third, right, which I don't, we'll still get top two. Come on, we will. But if we get third, I know people won't want to hear it. We've still had a fantastic season. A really good season. Do you know what I mean? We have. I know we won't see it at the time. Um, but I have to agree with Farka, and I think we'd have all said it. And and I remember Oscar saying something similar. If you'd have told me after West Brom and Preston that we'd have gone on to not lose a game for as long as we had, and I said you need putting in an insane, insane asylum, you know, you'd have been locked up at Arkham. So we have to take the positives from that. So we bounced back from that, which at the time for a lot of fans seemed terminal. Ah, oh, that's playoffs now. I remember it. You know, we're still in there with five games left to go. Um, so like he said, if I'd have gave you that scenario, a lot of people would have turned around and said, that's not realistic. So he said, we have done a lot to be proud of. And maybe if we do get third and, you know, a couple of weeks after, we'll actually all be philosophical and look back and say, you know what? He did a fantastic job. Let's go win the league next time around. If indeed we didn't go up through the playoffs. I still think we'll get top two, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I say expected expectations change when. Sorry, I just want to react to this. When you are uh, top of the league, you can't compare it. Right, okay. All units. We were top of the league for about a week. Let's not let's not say that we were there f for ages. We we were there for the international break, and that's it. So, yeah. But I hear what you're saying. I do hear what you're saying. But let's not rewrite it and pretend that we're being top like Leicester City. Do you know what I mean? Because we haven't. Um, 
like he said, we've done a lot to be proud of. And in the last 24 hours, we've spoken about what needs to improve. And again, I want to give props to my man, Lockie. Remember, what needs to change? We were asking the question, is it personnel? Is it tactics? And Lockie said it could be something as simple as a conversation with the team. We've seen it happen with Bielsa. We all remember, and I, and I and I said this, and I said this in the WhatsApp group. If you look at, if you go look at Ampadu's demeanor after that loss on the interview you were with LUTV, it don't look great. He's hurting, but we've seen that before with Luke Kaling. So Daniel Farker letting them sit and fester in that loss because it hasn't been good enough. The performances haven't been good enough. Maybe it's a mentality thing, being top of the league and then poof coming down um, and then oh we, we, we've got to the summit now we're flying like Lockie was saying again it was fun then it became pressurised and the last three performances haven't been fun key personnel have had to be come out because of knocks and blocks and all that sort of stuff I don't know what I'm, why I said blocks but you, you, you know um, yeah I'm talking shit and that I don't know where, where blocks came from I'm very tired if you some mail if you haven't watched WrestleMania, by the way, genuinely it's up there as one of the best ever. Um, yeah, the the main event was amazing. Amazing. Um, anyway, last 24 hours we've spoken about what needed to improve. Sometimes it's not about tactics at this stage of the season. Sometimes, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? It's about who's got it up there. Who's got it up there to come back from a loss to say, do you know what? We're going to go out and win this game. By hook or by crook. I will get that ball in dangerous areas, right? And go win that game for Leeds United. Really? Really, bro? I, 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 I can't... I, please don't do this to me. You'll be telling me Father Christmas and the Easter Bunny aren't real next. Don't do that to me, mate. It's bad enough as it is right now. Um, Right, let's talk about the next point. He was asked about promotion race pressure. Yeah? Oh, Mr. Dodo. Mr. Dodo. If you're watching it, right, bro, genuinely it is amazing. You will enjoy it. Um... Okay, so Farker on promotion race pressure. He says Southampton are still there in the race. I disagree. I disagree. Uh, but he's going to say this. Managers say these things, right? Um, he said it's more complicated for them. Um, Andrew, hold that thought because Daniel Farker is going to tell you why. Yeah? Daniel Farker is going to tell you why. Yeah? Um, so there you go. We, we'll get to it. Um, Southampton are still in the race. He said it's more complicated for them, but they do have quality and are capable to win several games in a row. Any of us are in this top four. We could win them all and still not go up. Automatic. That's that's the truth of it. Um, but he says it's also about individual quality as well as a team. Bit of luck in terms of injuries. Then it's also about the right mentality for these last five games. That's one thing that we hope Leeds United you know, can come back from. Can come back from. Um he says one thing to get close to the line, but then to have the mentality to bring it over the line. Again, coming back to that, it's less about tactics. It's less about individual. It's more about what's up here and how we can go and win a game of football. Listen, please do smash a like on the video. We we need two likes for 100 likes. Do that for me, please. I know it's like late video, later than normal and a bit on the fly, but if you can hit the like, subscribe as well if you can, because we're on the road to 30k. I want to try and get there before the end of the season. Um, right, okay, so um, one thing is to get close to the line, but then to have the mentality to bring it over the line. This is where I do worry a little bit about Ipswich because they've been there and they've done it. They did it last season. You know, um, um, have Leeds United brought it to the line, as Farker said, and then bottled it at the line. Who knows? Um he says, the winning mentality is what you need to have and to show. I'm a competitor, so I enjoy the crunch time period. Never a big fan of friendlies. Don't like testimonials. I want to play games as a player and a manager where it's important. This is good. This is good to hear from him. And again, you have to come back to him winning this league twice. You have to. Some people don't like it. want to say, if I hear he's won this league twice, well, of course you're going to lean on that when you're in a ta when you're in a race for promotion yeah of course you're gonna lean on that um he says i really enjoy this time of the season if he's if he's exuding that to his team then that's good for me that's good for me um he says it comes with lots of work and pressure but it's quite enjoyable again i like to hear that 
you know, we seen Enzo, and Leicester looked like they're going to get it over the line, though, but Enzo wobbled. Enzo Maresca wobbled when he said, it's a big game for them and not for us. That was a wobble. And look at the run they went on. Le Leicester might be all right. They've still got some tough games, West Brom and stuff, a little bit later on. But these next two, I think they pick up six points. I did predict they'd get nine from the three, and they've already got three, so two more wins, I think, for them. I think they might be done. Um... But yeah, he said it's it's quite enjoyable. I like to find the right balance to be really competitive and still have a smile on your face. So again, this is this is positive um, from Farker. He's saying all the right things. He's saying all the right things. Um, he's, he was then asked about bringing the best out of the players that he has, right? Um, he says, my personal feeling is that I'm at my best when the sea is getting rough. You have to show leadership to be there with a cool head. When the fire is burning in the heart, I can feel it. That you know, do you see what I'm saying? That 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 that. Um... Sorry, I don't know what this means, Andy. One sec, Andy Joe. I appreciate your optimistic views, but sometimes you have got to be really and rich. I don't know what that means, bro. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if you've watched the start of the video. All I beg, all I beg of all of you, please, is listen to what I'm saying, because you don't. It's almost like you know you have you have narratives about players, yeah, and agendas. You have agendas with what I'm saying as well, because sometimes you don't listen. Because if you go back to the start of the video, you'll hear that I said that it's the first time I've started to be worried. You're not listening. You know what I mean? So please do do that. Wurzel Gummidge is a scarecrow. It's a TV program from back in the day. It's a, it's a. People will say you look like Wurzel Gummidge, but I don't get the reference there. I don't know. Shit crack Andy, basically. Um, right, okay. Um, do better. Be funnier if you're gonna come with with, you know, decent crack. Um, okay. So let's get back to it. What you were saying, right? Again, I came on. I'm worried. Leeds record against Sunderland, Farker's record against Sunderland, the fact that we've got injuries, I'm worried, and then you hear the man speak, right? Again, this line, I think it's great. My personal feeling is I'm at the best when the sea is getting rough. You have to show leadership to be there with a cool head when the fire is burning in the heart. As Leo Sayer would say, I can feel the thunder in my heart. Said I just can't control. Do you remember that tune? What a banger. It's never a game of chess between managers. Most important are the players. I'm important to help my players. I know we've got a pretty young group in terms of energy. It helps a lot. But in experience, it can be challenging. Quite similar scenario when I think about my first promotion with Norwich. That I've done it twi twice before. is no guarantee we'll do it again. But I believe in my team and I believe in my group. If you have a man who's been there, done it, wore the T-shirt, and he's talking to you in these in these ways, you know, fire in the heart, let's go, Leo Sayer, put the track on, forget Drizzy Drake, forget Dave, put a bit of Leo Sayer on, and come flying out of that changing room, you know? He lives and breathes this shit, he wants this shit, you know? Um, Farker on the pressure, he says, first of all, the most important topic is to stay the same. You make me feel like dancing, I want to dance night away. Love that, Carl Bull. Uh, so <laughs> sometimes there is a special attention on the game. Managers overreact and have to do something special, overinterpreting their own role. When I was a young manager, I thought he had to change many things, surprise the opponent's coach, and out of good intention, you end up surprising your own team. It is important to not be too driven by emotions. Yeah, At the end of the day, we are driven by emotions. Yeah, We are as a fan base. Every fan base is driven by emotions, right? So, Farker's saying, and Bielsa used to say the exact same thing. If I'm giving them one instruction, yeah, and then we lose a game and I totally rip up the rule book and change five players and say, right, we're now going to play 4-4-2, as some people were suggesting in the chat last night, then the players would go, what the fuck are we doing here? What are we doing? So, you know, he said... He said that he tried this in his earlier coaching career and it didn't work out. He says, many people in the business, the world goes crazy and everything is panicking after one poor result or already dancing, although you've won anything after a good result. I fall into that category, yeah? 
I fall into that category. We win one game, we're winning the league. We lose a game, it's going to be all right. Don't worry, we're still winning the league. We win again. Oh, my God, I told you we're winning the league. That's me. We don't hide from that fact. Um, Yeah, so he said, people can be dancing, although you've not won anything. People are panicking after a poor result. I think this is where he comes in, right? This is where his powers come to the front. His prowess, his skills, his, his level as a manager at this level anyway, in terms of what he's done, comes to the fore. Um, he said it's important to stay level, show some leadership, be a good role model and focus on the content. It's about the acting, not the talking. Like, for me, this is genuinely rally cry. I think he watched my Keep the Faith video yesterday and thought, yeah, I'm going to match your energy, Joe. I'm going to match your energy. Um, he says, Farka, so he was then asked about making sure the players do not blink, keep their eyes on the prize. Yeah. He said, outside of our group, everyone is allowed to overreact. We're allowed to, we're fans, right? He says, football is full of emotions. Supporters can be over the moon or down after a loss, but it's also important to focus the group on what is necessary. Don't listen to outside voices. Yeah. I could have done without a defeat sharpens all senses but I also have to say sometimes when you have so many positive results if you just have the experience to invest a bit more you're coming away with a good result a little setback sharpens everything someone said it on my video yesterday it might actually give the the the, the players a kick up the ass had they become complacent was it too easy maybe you know um, he says, you take away from it, we can't afford to give 2% less. I take the positives out of this. It leads to a situation in the last five games where we are switched on. They know what they need to do. Now, you cannot drop the ball. You cannot drop the ball. We are so lucky. We are so lucky in a sense that Norwich did what they did. Because if had Ipswich won, then we'd be looking at a totally different kettle of fish. We're one point behind them, people. It is nothing. It is nothing. And it may be copium Yorkshireman. Of course, people don't like to lose. But when you do, you have to take the positives. You have to take the positives, otherwise you'll just stay in a, in, in a negative mindset, right? Yes, we lost, right. Dust yourself down. This is what we did well. This isn't what we did well. Right, what are we going to do to rectify it? You know what? We've got five Cups finals, Leeds United. If you want to see this team back to the Premier League, you need to be on it. I think a different Leeds United comes out. We've just got to take our opportunities, though, because I feel, and this has been the same in the Bielsa era, and it's the same with this core group of individuals that have been here a long time, and I think it's hard sometimes to shake this stuff. If Leeds United fluff their lines, they then struggle. They then struggle. And if we go behind, sometimes it's like, oh, God, we've been here before, and we struggle. And we need to get over that. I think that's still a hangover from the Bielsa era, genuinely. Genuinely, when we concede first after we've fluffed chances, and it's normally Bamford, if we're being honest, or Dan James, less so this season. You know? Um, uh, there you go. Anyway, so um, back to this. Uh, it leads to a situation in the last five games where we are switched on. We were missing in the duels against Coventry. Then I think it's beneficial for the last five games. It's obviously a positive sign. We are not at our best, but we still win every statistic. Which, Locks, if you're watching, I know you tagged me in something where he got it wrong, but he actually got it right. So the guy who created the tweet was chatting shit. Um, so, yeah, and, and look, we spoke about this yesterday. The Jake Bidwell clearance off the line and the Joel Pirro strike. Leeds United were crap against Coventry, but still could have got a point. I know we didn't, but again, when you have a couple of days and you look at it and you go, on another day we could have got a point and we'd have been going, Phew, you know? And we'd have all been going, me, I'd have been saying, yeah, we're undefeated, don't sweat about it, man. This is where that thing comes in of we've lost a game, right? We need to change our performance level then. Because it ain't good enough to be shit and just picking up points. We need to go out like Trojans, you know? So, there we are. Um, even with a poor performance, we are not far away from grinding out results. This is the point, right? And that's when, you know, it's hard for us. But if we, if we, if we go back and actually look at that Jake Bidwell clearance, the chances that we did miss, we weren't that far away. Um, he says, come on, we have to be there with natural aggression and invest even more then we have a great chance to win many points. 
I do get the 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 feel. A lot of it is about mentality. A lot of it is about pushing these players. You know, strange name spoke about fine margins. These are the fine margins. Lockie touched on it. It could be something so simple as having a chat with the player, having a chat with the group, making them realise that come on, you know, this is slipping through our fingers. If you are not switched on a hundred percent, teams will take it away from you. You're Leeds United as well. Let's not forget this. We're Leeds United. I don't care what anyone says. Maybe Sunderland can ha have a conversation in terms of massive fan bases because they are big. Um, they do have a bigger stadium. If we had a bigger stadium, we'd be getting no more numbers, etc. But my point is, Sunderland are the same as well. Where everyone's cup final, Coventry broke their record, their all-time attendance record playing Leeds United. And if you watch that game, there was still bare seats. There were still so many seats that weren't filled. So this is the kind of level that we're dealing with. You know? So we have to remember that. And that's where Farquhar has to come in and say, right, okay, you're gonna, are you willing to let these people take it away from you? Because they will. They will if you're not on it. You know? Um, he spoke about the, the squad. This is where we get to the injury stuff, okay? Um, no additions, okay? No, no, like, added additions. Let me just come back. Shawnee, I hear what you're saying, brother. I hear you, but please, now, come on. We ha I know. I know none of us, anything we say now will have any bearing on the football pitch, but I beg and plead with people, let's just try and back it. Let's try and back it. Even if you don't feel that Bamford is your man and he needs to be released and all this sort of stuff. We have to try and support them. We have to. Because being critical, it's not helping anyone. I hear what you're saying. I understand why people are upset, but it ain't going to help anyone. At this time. I don't think. Well, I know so it won't. You know? Bamford's time will come. He won't get released. Why would you release a player like be silly like you wouldn't but we just have to be on it man as a fan base as well as a fan base as well um who knows what he says to them yeah what is he saying to the likes i don't know i don't really care like what 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 does that matter at this moment in time michael creswell for whatever reason joffy what does it matter what he's saying to them i don't care um he can't support someone who can't. Well, he can finish his dinner, Shawnee, because he's scored goals, bro. He has scored goals. He has scored goals. But you have to support him, bro. When he comes over the line in that white shirt, you have to support him. You're not going to be stood there booing him, are you? I don't know if you're going to the games or whatever, but we have to support them now. We have to try and come together and do that, even on social media and stuff. Anyway, Farker on the squad. No additions. There is a question mark over Ethan Ampadu, okay? Um, he has been ill over the last 48 hours. We'll need to play a part in the short session tomorrow morning if he is to play. So there'll be a small session before they travel to... Uh, not to Sunderland, before they go to Ellen Road, okay? We took Roberts out of training yesterday. Same with Willie Nonto, just as a precaution. They probably will be available but can't confirm if more minutes than the last game. I just expect them to be fully ready for 90 minutes for the Middlesbrough game, okay? So, Nonto, Robert's probably not going to start. Yeah? They're not going to start. They may be used off the bench. But again, this is the issue that we have. We've got loads of niggles and stuff, and the players can't even play, you know... From the start, this is frustrating. But Borough's in, in two games' time. Um, you know, definitely. So we've got this week, obviously, Tuesday, Sunderland, Saturday, Blackburn. Um, one second. Um, Vega says, it's when think folks fault that support is necessary. Supporting only when things are hunky-dory is hypocrisy. I love that, Vega, from you. Um, yo, great shout, Dave. I would argue he's worse. <laughs> he's worse. He's worse than Bamford. You know? The Coop's here is a circling. But again, this again, Don, this is where I come back to it. If he goes with Cooper, if he goes with Cooper, then people need to support it. 
they need to support it. Um, well, Bryn, he... Okay, he's not Harry Kane. Okay, he's not Ollie Watkins. Yeah? He's not Dominic Solanke, whoever you want. But, please, folks, know that the upturn in form was also because of Pat. Don't tell me he can't finish his dinner when he's getting Puskas Awards for fucking wonder strikes. He can. He's just very, very profligate. Very, very pro profligate. Um, you know, it's mad. Please, please, people. Because it actually gets me down. It gets me down when I see it. So imagine what it does to them if they see it. Genuinely, it gets me down when I'm like, oh, come on, let, let the guy catch a break. He missed the sitter. He knows. He's missed it. To then just compound that, it's just it doesn't help anyone for me. Well, all units, I'm going to come back to you and tell you that you're lying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. You, you, you uh, why? Do, this is what I mean. I, I don't, I don't want to make this about Bamford, but we'll talk about it, yeah? We'll talk about it because if you're saying he doesn't do anything, you just don't watch him enough, okay? Yeah, I would. Jamie, this is what I mean. You're not listening. You are not listening to me. Have I said, have I said that Bamford should start? Did I say that? In any of this video, in 32 minutes, have I sat here and said Bamford should start? The answer is no. I am defending him because all I see is negativity about him and he's a League United player that now we know after the press conference is going to start. Whether you agree or disagree with Farker on that, the facts are he is going to start. So all I'm asking is please support him. I've not once during this video said... Bamford should start, Joseph should be on the bench. So nothing's changed. All that's, well, I'd say all that's changed, but it hasn't changed because no one's fucking listening again. <laughs> no one's listening. I didn't say, I didn't say he should be starting. I'm defending him because he should be defended because he's a Leeds United player. You know, he's a Leeds United player. My volume doesn't need turning up, Andrew. It's the highest it's been. Turn up yours. You know, that's all I'm saying. It's 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 like it's like if Cooper plays, agree, disagree, Creswell should, but just support him, just try and support him. That's all I'm saying. Um, right, okay, and 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 what I will say for those and and my point was Daniel Fark has actually told us why he's playing him. Do you know what I mean? But let's talk bri briefly. Um. Joe, you can have Bamford on your team. Yeah, he is in my team. I'm a Leeds United fan like you, bro. <laughs> um, anyway, Farker on Sunderland. Nothing to play for in this business is relative. Each point is important. It says a lot about the ambition of this club that they have had managerial changes. Um, says enough about the ambition of this club and where they want to finish. They have lots of individual quality, not the best period in the last few weeks and months. Like every other team, a game against Leeds is the biggest stage and the biggest spotlight. Yeah, that's fine. Bro, do you know what you said? Right, okay, so we'll see who's talking shit here. You said, Joe, you can have Bamford on your team. Okay, my team is Leeds United, same as yours. So guess what, Elmi? You also can have Bamford on your team because you have no choice in it because you are not the manager. So you need to accept it. Come to terms with it now that probably for the next five games, Bamford's going to start. So if anyone's talking shit, it's you. <laughs> if anyone is talking shit, it is you because my team is Leeds United and I'm accepting of the fact that Bamford's going to start whether I like it or not. It's you that's in denial. It's you that's in denial. You know? Mental, mental. So you can say I'm talking shit, but it's you that's in denial, bro. I, I don't know what I've spoken shit about. All I said is, yeah, Bamford will be my team because I'm a Legion United fan, as are you. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, 
I don't, again, I, I don't think you you have though, Jamie. I'm not saying that. Um, would you say that? Just one one minute. Um, you are critical. That's fine. Yeah. Um, one hundred percent. Okay. Um, now, just looking through the chat, just to see where it does blur the lines. Um, one second. I'm just trying to have a look. I, there's so many comments. But you know when people say, he's just shit. But that's not criticism, is it? That's hate. Being critical of someone's performance saying like he's missed a sitter, but people don't say that. Or are you talking about someone else? I don't know, bro. But, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's wild. And this is why it then becomes... And it's hard for me to do it, but this is why it then becomes me defending him because I feel like I have to defend because he's a Leeds United player. But we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. So, Farker on Bamford. Everyone's favourite subject, people. Everyone's favourite subject. So, here we go, right? Here we go. For those that say... He isn't giving us anything. And I'm not... Listen, I, again, yesterday, I I said yesterday, and I agree, yeah, that Bamford's performance, the last three, have not been great. But I would always argue... Uh, uh, sorry, not always. But I would also argue that the rest of the team have not been great. Yeah? Rest of the team... Not just him. As I said, when we drawn against Watford, it wasn't Cooper's fault. Uh, had we drawn against... Um, sorry, we lose against Coventry, it wasn't all Bamford's fault. Yeah? Um. So, that's where I'm at with regards to uh, the performance. They've all been poor, and Bamford's been poor. Yeah? Um. Now... This is what Farker, the manager, had to say on him. He called, okay, he says, Patrick is experienced, okay? He's also known as a striker. Either you are top class and everyone celebrates you and sings your name, or you are poor and the reason we don't score. That is the fate of a striker, okay? This is what he said. That is the fate of a striker. We don't have to speak about it. I'd like to say it's important that with our emotions in a positive and neg negative way, that we don't exaggerate. There's a lot of exaggeration on how poor Bamford is. Yeah? Shawnee, I've got a show. I've got a show on my channel where I say he cost us promotion. Go watch it. I'm there. I've seen it. I, there are no explanations for it. He should have scored and it cost us promotion. There's a short. Go look for my YouTube shorts, bro. Um, I said that miss will cost us um, and send us down. I said that. Um, okay, so it is important that we don't exaggerate. He says we have a tendency to praise our academy starlets without having played one ball in the first team. It's important, again, that's the Mateo chat, right? It's important not to put too much weight on their shoulders. Also, the other way around, in recent games, to not underestimate what Patrick is giving to the team. He is a special player. At the beginning, he was waiting for his chance in the starting lineup. I also had to learn that it's a bit more like Patrick's nat natural appearance. He's such a tall guy with his movement. If he scores a goal, he looks like he has natural self-confidence. He's, ele he's elegant, scores goals like his world is at Peterborough. If he's not scoring goals, then people say natural self-confidence looks like arrogance. I have to point to statistics of the last game. Okay, so this is Coventry. And let's be honest, when Bamford's playing well, we all love him. And this isn't just... Everybody hates Bamford. Not just... Uh, I say hates a strong word, Leeds fans, but outside of Leeds, everybody hates him. Not sure why. Is it because he's a posh boy? Da 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 Do you see what I'm saying? Even the even the the squad were poking fun at him for being um, privately educated. There might be something in that. Probably is. Ah, he's a Tory, huh? Blah, 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 blah. Do you see what I'm saying? Um. Anyway... Back to what he did at Coventry. He said, I have to point to statistics of the last game. 
Patrick was the offensive player who covered the biggest distance until he was substitutes. Not just for us, but for them as well. So the player that run the most and covered the most distances in that game was Patrick Bamford. So that shows you he is involved. He is involved, right? He's not static. He said he was number two in terms of all my players in sprint distance, number two in high-speed distance, so I would say the player with the best work ethic. It doesn't look like this. Sometimes a smaller player looks a bit more energetic, powerful. It doesn't take away in two or three scenes. His big chance, he should be more focused. We need him with his worth, worth sorry, we need him with his work ethic and experience. Overall, it's also important to have a look at what we have done since he came back into the starting lineup. Since Bamford came back in the starting lineup, Daniel Farker says no team has won more points. It is the first game we've lost with him in the starting lineup this year. And then he goes on to say it's important we back our key players. And like it or not, folks, Bamford is the key player. That's from the manager, not from me. Yeah, not from me. That's from the manager. And that's all I'm doing is reiterating what he says. And I think we have to back our key players. Anyway, um, moving on. That's Bamford. Let's not talk about it anymore, okay? Listen, I genuinely will say a prayer tonight to my deity for Bamford to score so we can just move on. We can just move on. Please, Pat, I'll pray with you now, yeah? Pray. We can all do it together, yeah? Om. Alhamdulillah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, loads of day is there for you. Please, Patrick Bamford, tomorrow score the goal that sees Leeds United pick up three points. You know, let's just do it. Manifest it. And I promise you, yeah, I promise you, that if he scores tomorrow, I won't even speak. I will celebrate the goal, but I ain't going to say I told you. I won't. Just let's hope that he does it. Let's just hope that he does it. You know? Let's hope that he does it. Um. Anyway, Farker on the promotions. Um. Farker on promotion being in and out of hands. Listen, folks, can we stop talking about Pat, please? Because <laughs> you're all just arguing with yourselves in the chat, and it's actually bringing me down. <laughs> it's actually bringing me down. No doubt it's bringing you down. Like, love Pat. Just let's hope he scores. <laughs> Long Shane who says, right, let's move on to Melier. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, anyway. With this amount of games to go, this is the feeling we have. It is in our own hands, okay? It's important, and I mentioned this, especially we need to win our home games. If we win our home games, grind out, um, grind out good results on the road, then happy days. Then we finish in a top position that allows us to speak about automatic promotion. We have to give, as a group of players, staff and supporters, let's play these last three games as cup finals. If our supporters want to celebrate at the end of the season, if it's possible, you guys carry us through challenging periods in the game. And that's the same as backing the players, yeah? Farker on the top three collapse possibility. Yes, because the running to grind out results is more difficult than the middle of the season. To deliver this in the running when you when you face sides fighting at the wrong end, to grind out a point is always difficult. In the past, if you look, there are un unexpected results. Best position for Leicester, then for Ipswich, and then us. Then Southampton, worst position, but two games in hand. They play us and Leicester, which means if they win those games, their direct opponent is not winning any points. It's important to be respectful. After Christmas, nobody was talking about us. In this league, crazy things can happen. For us, it's important we're focused on ourselves. I still think if we're there with good results, our fate is in our own hands to finish in a good position. So even though mathematically it's out of our hands now, he's saying, like, as long as we win, our, he believes, obviously, looking at the fixtures, that they'll drop points. That's what, he, that's what, what I think, anyway. He then spoke on Gruev. He played, thank God, for 65 to 70 minutes, perhaps a bit longer than he should have. A bit unlucky that after the last international break, red-hot form players who played a crucial role, you know, they're out. And we've seen that, right? With Nonto, with Gruev, Dan James took a knock mentally more so than physically. Um, and he said, you know, you do need a, a bit of luck for the running. 
We've already had several setbacks in terms of injuries. When I think what happened during the season, Pascal Strauch, we played the last 25 games without our central defender, a guy who was more or less our captain on the pitch. Nobody was speaking about this because of our partnership between Ethan and Rodon. Hopefully we have a bit of luck in the running, no new injury concerns for the running. If we have this group together, we can get important results. He's saying all the right things, right? Spoke about the international break hangover. He said, after the international break, it's always tricky. There are two weeks away. When I compare style of football of national teams, they play different in many ways to us. Then to focus them without having a training session on what we want to do straight away, busy schedule like we had, it's always a bit tricky. Um, he says, right now, we keep going with Tuesday, Saturday, but this time around, it was even more. Remember, we played straight away. Also, not helpful if we feel too sorry for ourselves. It makes no sense to complain about it. We concentrate on the things we can influence. Hopefully it's improving day to day. We do not look back. And then he spoke about team around. They're self-critical. This is what I like. They were not happy with their individual performances. We had several under par. And overall, we were not at our best. They were all unhappy. And I like this because you could argue it does something with self-confidence. The most important topic is to stay humble. Be self-critical. Don't point with the finger. We need to try to do that as a fan base, right? Let's speak about the things we can do better. This is the mentality they've shown. And I feel that a lot of this week, after that Coventry, it almost feels like it's been about mentality. It's a been what? What went wrong? How do we fix it? Yeah, we weren't at our best. This is what we're going to do, Daniel. You know? And he's saying all the right things. So let's hope that then is conveyed on the football pitch. Tomorrow is crunch. Tomorrow is crunch. And the important thing here as well, folks, is Leicester and Leeds United play tomorrow. Ipswich play Wednesday. Ipswich play Wednesday against Watford, who are unbeaten in four since Cleverly came in. And they were good against us. So, yeah. This is important. This is important. I don't want to bore you too much. I feel like, you know, we've we've really gone on a bit of an emotional roller coaster during this video. Highs, lows, mids, you know? And then, yeah. Uh, all units. Why have we been so poor from corners for years? I don't bro. I don't know, bro. We are shit at him, though. There's only Pascal Strout that can find the back of the net, and he doesn't even do that with his head. Yeah? He doesn't even do that with his head. He, he does it with his feet. Um, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, David, again... Uh, you can't change it now with five games left to go. He said when he spoke about personnel tactical, he's not going to make changes now because the players will be left scratching their heads saying, what, we've done this for 41 games and now you want to throw it all in? Can't see it. Give Cresswell a chance beside Rodon before you say about him being the wrong side of centre-back. Rodon will be beside him so it will fit. No, they'll still be right-footed. But I hear you, Sean. Why not? Why not? I don't think he will, though. If we're being honest, I don't think he will. He'll go Cooper. Or maybe even play Gruyev there. But listen, Ampadu was ill. I'm hoping Ethan says, I'll be all right. Don't worry about it. We shall wait and see. Listen, smash a like on this video. This was very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Therapeutic for me. Therapeutic for me. I'm also very tired and delirious after two late nights watching WrestleMania. So maybe it's that. But um, look, folks, thanks for supporting the channel as always. Thanks for... Um, Sean Ely for the Super Chat. Ethan all been a member now for 35 months, which is absolutely insane. Um, 12, 24, 36. Wow. One more, and you'll have been three years. And you were my first member, I think, Ethan, so big up to you. We are heading towards 30k. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Felt that way, Eva, didn't it? Felt that way. I felt I went on a journey as well. I felt like I went on a journey. Um... Eve, you'll be back with us tomorrow night as well after the game, so it'll be interesting to see what she has to say. All love indeed. I'm going to quickly film um, my pre-match now for Sunderland. Um, and, yeah, that'll be out tonight. And then I think I'm getting with locks in the morning uh, just to chat about our games, like our weekly title talk, as we call it. Um, so, yeah, that, that'll hopefully be in them. And like Dawn says, great way to end it. Keep the faith. Yeah, please do. And I'll, uh, I'll see... Make sure you watch tonight's video, and I'll see you live tomorrow for the watch-along anyway, Rona. Stay positive. Let's go. Peace.